I'm at the Make a Makerspace conference with Bill and tell us about makers in the classroom. Well, I'll give you a little bit about my background. Uh, I've spent the last 15 years teaching physics in the public school setting and to teach science uh, in an engaging way for me as a teacher, projects was woven right uh, throughout the curriculum. Um, the, the, where the MAKE movement has really made an impact uh, on my experience as an educator is providing access to amazing tools at affordable prices. Right? The open source, how the open source hardware and software efforts have dovetailed with MAKE. Um, so uh, affordable tools that are highly capable. I, I worry less if I have students taking trying stuff with those tools, because if they break, it was worth it. Right? I'm not saying we're going to be careless, but so the so make for me in my classroom uh, is great tools that we can take some risks with and trying stuff out, which students love because they always want to try something new. Um, and then it's a community of people to share ideas, uh, with whom to share ideas. And, and the, the online resources, uh, the magazine's great, uh, but mostly it's that distributed network of people who are also trying these things. And we can, we can share a language around project-based, um, but it's been neat to see how the, using the word make as an umbrella has pulled so many other people into the conversation. So we're in my physics classroom, we're doing projects focused on uh, specific units in the curriculum. We're also talking to math teachers. Uh, I'm talking to math teachers about the projects they do and their relevance. I'm talking to uh, engineering and technology teachers, uh, to art teachers, because the overlap between the disciplines is uh, so significant. Um, we can really elicit from any project uh, outcomes and various learning strands. So to me, that's the, been the really neat aspect of, of make in my classroom. So it's not like making has to be just in the shop class or the engineering class. It, it, it bridges other subjects, is that correct? Oh, well, absolutely. That's it. That's what engages kids, right? We, we get at some intrinsic motivation when they want to see their idea in 3D solid form, or even, I mean, I'm not, we don't want to discount uh, making on the computer. Think of uh, uh, projects we can do where there's not a physical entity. Uh, maybe it's an animation project we made where we stop motion, we fa uh, fabricated something, but then the final product's on the screen. Um, but that, but that those become uh, cross-disciplinary um, almost by virtue of being. Right? That, that there's no uh, project 3D form or on the computer that doesn't have a visual component to it. Um, you can facilitate dis discussions around your projects, written work around your projects. Uh, in, in science, uh, the role math plays, mathematical analysis plays. So you set that project out there with a, a goal that meshes with what the students are excited about, and they'll take off, and you're going to really be able to link to a lot of different curricula. What are some of the differences between when someone designs something on the computer and when they get to actually hold it in their hands, like pulling their project out from the other side of the glass? So, so that's, a, that's a great question. I mentioned that you know, it doesn't always have to be 3D, and I'm kind of thinking as I'm talking about that. Um, I think teachers should watch what happens, see with their own students. I think that's student dependent. Um, one aspect of a computer that uh, that is different is that the way we have computers now, tablets aside, and that could be, will be very interesting to watch as that uh, grows as a tool. But it's the student with the keyboard and the mouse that has control. So even though there are two or three or four students in that group, often the project's focused on one computer and it closes out the conversation and the involvement of the other students. So the other kids are watching TV. Right, right. Very passive. And there's one person driving and the rest of them are passengers. Right. And 3D objects. Uh, they get to help. hold it in their hand. They get to, here's this design, here's this texture that I made, here's the shape that I made. 
you put it on your cell phone and either it's the right size or it's not the right size. Right. Um, and, and tablets may change that where it, it's flat on the desk, everybody, there's no one orientation. Oh, around. okay. Um, but a type of project we that I've done a lot of is the stop motion uh, animations. And that changes the scenario because students make physical elements that will then be in the digital world. And then they, they have control over what's in each frame, and right. they say, well, there's a step missing. Right. right. And, and like in science, when we collect data and represent a uh, physical entity with a, with a graph, and we now have a powerful tool to analyze what happened in the past and predict the future on the screen, what we measured, though, is physical, and we were all involved in it. And have you found this conference to be valuable? Absolutely. My, my goals as an educator are to take my classroom experience and weave it into an effort to start a makerspace in northern New Hampshire and uh, connect that uh, a multi-generational facility, so it's a facility that has offerings to all ages, um, but with a super strong focus on schools and giving schools, teachers, administrators, parents um, access to these um, experiences. And, and what we've done here, almost soup to nuts, we looked at many steps in the process and many pitfalls. You know, we're, we're fortunate to have uh, groups like uh, Artist Asylum, um, the Make It Group, I3, Hacker, Hacker, Hacker Hex, Hacktown, Hacker Space. Um, the, that have done this ahead of us yeah. and have learned... The pioneers of the maker movement. Right. And we're all still so early in, in these efforts, uh, but we can learn from each other. And I picked up uh, this weekend uh, items to, to watch out for early as I organize my uh, maker space to avoid pain later. <laughs> And, and, and then define the successes I'll have, and, you know, what, what to look for as an early success.